Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today to experience this ridiculously crazy thing. Arguably one of the hottest of the hot hatches. This is Renault's 72,000 pound Megan RS Trophy R Nürburgring record pack. It is one of only two in the UK of the 30 record pack cars in total that they've made to celebrate breaking the lap record for a front wheel drive car around the famous Nürburgring Nordschleife. Today, I can't wait to get behind the wheel. I did used to own a Renault hatchback, something quite different. It was my first car, a Renault Clio, about 15 years ago, which I've recently bought back, but not quite in the state it used to be. Unfortunately, it was involved in an accident, it was scrapped, it was crushed, but I do now own the wreck. This costs about 10 times the price of what that did back when it was new, but they have taken things to extremes. We are talking weight savings. It's 130 kilos lighter than the Megane RS. Carbon fiber everywhere, stripping out the back. It features a number of different technologies and additions to help with its track prowess. Today we are going to be exploring them all. So let's have a walk around to go through the details before jumping on board, hearing the sound, taking it out for a drive and seeing what this is all about. Let's start with a walk around to go through the extensive list of things that Renault have done to this car to make it into a crazy hatchback that costs a staggering £72,000. Yes, you have heard that number correctly. It is into serious sports car territory, but wait until you hear all of the extremes that they've gone to and everything that goes into this. Some highlights quickly. We've got an Akrapovic titanium exhaust. We've got a new diffuser and aero profile. It's on carbon fiber wheels. They've done away with the four control four wheel steering system to save some weight. Also taking weight out of the inside. There's no rear bench replaced with a cage with harnesses for the bucket seats up front. Also things like the infotainment screen has a smaller display to save a little bit of weight there too. We've also got Olin's dampers, carbon ceramic brakes, a carbon fibre bonnet. There's a special story behind the badge and even the DRLs that would normally be here have been replaced with cold air inlets for additional cooling. Now with the trophy R's there are actually 500 of them in total starting from 51 and a half thousand pounds of which 32 will be here in the UK. Out of those, there are just two though that are the Nürburgring record pack of the 30 that will be delivered in total worldwide. That consists of an additional set of the carbon wheels. It also comes with the regular ones which have a mounting bracket on the rear seat which is very cool. They also get the carbon ceramic brakes and these cold air inlets around the front too. But let's go through all of this then in a bit more detail. Starting up front, the carbon fibre bonnet saves eight kilos versus its steel equivalent. We have a NACA duct here in the center, which accelerates airflow in for cooling of the engine. This car has the 1.8 liter turbocharged four cylinder, making 300 horsepower, 400 newton meters of torque, hooked up to a six speed manual gearbox. It's manual only, power going through the front wheels, which means zero to 62 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour is 5.4 seconds and onto a top speed of 262 kilometers per hour, 163 miles per hour. So we're talking a very quick thing to begin with. One of my favourite details though is this, the badge. This is actually Renault's adaptive cruise control badge. You can see that with the sensor in the centre, although behind it they've taken out the electrics. And the reason for that is it's actually lighter to use this configuration than to have the normal badge without the adaptive sensor. All of these small little details. Obviously we've got the red accents and touches all around and the Nürburgring record pack car comes with three details. The carbon wheels with the standard ones to store inside, the gold carbon ceramic brakes and also replacing the DRL which would normally sit here which moves up now into the main headlight unit with a cold air inlet on this side for additional cooling. If we keep coming around though, you've got the Olin's dampers, which have 10 different settings to adjust the ride. Some very aggressive camber, I believe on this car too. We've got the carbon ceramic brakes and the carbon fiber wheels. Now you can opt to have the carbon fiber wheels on the regular Trophy R. It starts from 51 and a half thousand pounds. Those are a 12,000 pound option, or of course included as well as the regular Fuji Light 19 inch wheels on the Bridgestone Potenza uh, S007 tires that we have as well uh, with the record pack cars. If we keep coming down towards the it has standard brakes uh, at the back, but down here we have the Akrapovich exhaust, which tucks in here with the cut exhaust tips to minimize the impact on the aero profile through this very cool carbon fiber diffuser with all of the fins and vanes that you can see. But let me come and show you as well the interior of this car. Inside here, unlocks, open it up. We have 
Sabelt bucket seats, we've got an Alcantara steering wheel, the six speed manual shifter. Um, behind you can mount up the harnesses, but I've got to show you this rear deck. This is not what you expect to see. The rear seats have been removed. This is a curved mounting bracket to put your set of four wheels and tires. They come in bags, which you can strap down and mount them and hold them in place. Obviously we've got the cage where you can have your harnesses going through and hooking up to your front seats as well. Now you might be wondering, why does it still have back doors? This is of course homologation. It's launched uh, as a five door hatch, so they have to stay, even though it's exclusively a door for your wheels to open up to store your wheels inside. A very, very, very cool detail. Back here in the boot of the car, it even has a lighter floor. This saves 1.3 kilos just by making this into a lighter floor to cover that up. They save 25.3 kilos by taking out the bench. It saves 32 kilos by taking out the four control system. They save 250 grams, get this, by putting in a seven inch central display instead of the normal 8.7 that it would have. So almost, well, out of the lower end uh, Megane specification models, we've got a digital display inside as well. And I have to tell you, it does sound good, which we're gonna be hearing plenty of in a moment. This car is number 26 out of 500. But yes, I think initially, it's clearly quite a special thing. And I can't wait actually to get it out on the road. So I've got the key just here, which is, I say a key, but this fairly thin uh, Renault key fob. We'll step on board, start this up very quickly. Start button just here to the left. Yeah, sounds good, doesn't it? So we'll let things warm up a little bit and then we'll take it on out, go find some nice countryside roads. I think this is gonna be quite a fun thing to experience and I can't wait. Unfortunately, it seems to be drizzling slightly, but I'm here today at Renault's base in the UK where they have this car on fleet. And given there are only two in the country, it means there is only one customer who's lucky enough to own a Trophy R Nürburgring record pack. Now we will head on out towards some countryside roads to go and drive it on. I would love to take it straight over to the Nürburgring, but I think if I drove nine hours each way and did a few laps on the Nordschleife, Renault UK might not be particularly happy with me. You can tell instantly though, that this is a car that has track purpose. Everything is very sensitive, the throttle and brake pedal, the shift feel is great, you've got a small but chunky steering wheel, good to hold, Alcantara. Obviously we're in the normal neutral as it's called driving mode at the moment. You can press RS drive which allows you to go into sport or into race or to personalise it as well. But just while we come out onto a dual carriageway we will head towards the motorway at first just to get out to some nicer roads. Yeah that feels good and I'm just driving it gently easily here. You can tell it's firm though. We've got the Oland's dampers. I think there are 10 different stages of adjustment that you have with those, but definitely on the firm end when you go over any tarmac changes or small bumps. I think if we start downshifting it though, especially with it in sport mode, it should start to get some noises from the Akrapovich exhaust system. So that's maybe we need to drive a little bit more aggressively. We'll go around the roundabout here. <laughs> and this is where the front end feels fantastic. Obviously a front wheel drive car. I spend a lot more time normally driving rear wheel drive high powered cars. Different feel. Oh, that feels good. Big smiles already. So we head on out then up into sixth gear. Let's press the RS drive button, pop it into neutral again. You could go even into the comfort setting. We're just gonna have a mile or so actually uh, on the motorway to drive it normally. And this is where of course you would like to have the adaptive cruise control, but taken out to save a couple of grams of weight. I love that attention to detail. When a car is so specific about its purpose, when it is built literally for one thing like this and one thing only, in the case of this, to go to the Nürburgring. There are some more weight savings. The seats, they save seven kilos each side. The carbon wheels, two kilos lighter a corner, and that's the unsprung mass. The parcel shelf, that's one and a bit kilos at the back. Everything is done to make this car as light as possible. Obviously, to go to the Nürburgring to set its lap record, where it did a time of seven minutes, 40.1 seconds. That's the bull lap. That's really, really quick. Obviously, the supercars will go a minute or so quicker, but this is a 300 horsepower front wheel drive hot hatch, and it still manages to achieve that, which shows you it's so much about the setup and about having a car, and you can configure this, you can manually adjust everything and make it perfect for the purpose, of course, and obviously for your desired track. I think it probably comes set up for the Nürburgring, especially in this setup. I just want to hurt a little, little bit faster around some corners. Unfortunately, 
Ah, uh, yes, squeaky brakes. Obviously, we do have carbon ceramics. I was going to say, unfortunately, with a little bit of traffic around and being on public roads and now 30 mile an hour speed limits, we need to take it a little bit easily at first. So with the RS drive, you press it once, that's when it goes up into sport, you get everything going red, the central screen and the dashboard. If you press and hold it, it actually goes into race, which gives you an entirely new look with uh, horizontal rev counter bars up towards the top and a much larger speedometer. You can then put it into the personalization setting and completely configure it as you like. When you lift off, you wait a moment and then you get the pops and bangs and crackles out of it, which is quite fun. I think if it's back into neutral, we probably have stop start as well there we go into neutral mode yeah stop start as you would expect uh, all the fuel efficiency side of things but a 1.8 liter engine making 300 horsepower that is obviously quite a lot simple maths will tell you that so let's head on through i think if i go in this direction i'm going to end up in the right kind of place to enjoy driving this this is why you love a hatch small gaps tiny roads that we have in the uk we love these things for a reason because on our roads you want something that's small and easy to drive and a front wheel drive or four wheel drive hatch is literally the perfect setup the perfect combo for the type of tarmac we have normally you'd want one that was perhaps slightly softer riding than this is obviously this suspension certainly in this configuration is at the very firm end you can change the ride height i think there's 16 mils of travel 1.6 centimeters uh, of adjustment in that through the 10 different settings but sitting in here obviously the interior is like a megan you have the fairly plasticky surfaces as you would expect what you're holding is a very nice alcantara steering wheel you've got the carbon effect finish uh, on the door inserts and some of the other parts that are around it as well but normal driving they like this if you don't mind a slightly firmer ride it's pretty good sitting quite low in the bucket seat great visibility around not too much to complain you can actually see the quite wide arches uh, when you look out in the in the mirrors now i haven't driven the megan rs to compare the trophy r or the trophy r number no, record pack to the regular rs but i imagine you get quite a lot of it this is just the icing on the cake this is that extra two percent which obviously brings a gigantic price tag with it but gives you ex extreme and insane performance as a result and a car that i imagine if we can drive it in anger something pretty spectacular I mean even just here it feels exciting and sometimes it's easy to forget that an emotional connection to a car it's not necessarily about top trumps and how much horsepower it has and how much it costs I know in this case maybe a bit but it's also about what it feels like and how it makes you feel to be behind the wheel and instantly sitting in here you've got the excitement of being able to change the modes of hearing some of the pops and bangs from the crap which listen to that listen to that let's just <laughs> window down for a second it's after you lift off that it does it and then we head back out into the national speed limit road where we can accelerate and you do have to cling on a little bit obviously talk steering front wheel drive but it gets a move on it is plenty quick enough don't underestimate this amount of power 300 horsepower yes maybe a focus rs that you cost about half the price had 350 but miles per mile factor is pretty high with this thing and I would say that's a big part of what I enjoy about driving you know having a car that is just entertaining and to take us down a very twisty oh, the squeaky brakes from the carbon ceramics but a twisty tiny country road because well it always makes things keeps them a little bit more interesting as we watch out for the people we need to go past and go and explore as I'm rolling down the hill here this is where when you just lift off the throttle like this give it a small stab it just pops and crackles away, which is childish entertainment, but sometimes you want a little bit of that to enjoy the car, to enjoy the driving experience, and we get pops and bangs on demand. Now this is a very small twisty road, and I'm hoping it's gonna open up in a moment so that I can stretch the legs a little bit more and uh, put the foot down, but it is certainly on the very bumpy end. In this current configuration, I'm sure you can soften it up a little bit when you're driving like this. Now in here, you can bring up some of the specifics to the settings you're in. You can change the different modes. So if we go into, uh, for example, personalization here, set that up, we've got the option to configure current mode. You've got the dynamic driving system in neutral, ESC in sport, powertrain in race, climate in neutral, scroll it down, display, engine sound, ambient lighting, change the colors. But I'm just gonna bump it back into sport, to be honest. I think it's more suited to the occasion. But I love having those, those kind of options and being able to play with some of the settings like this. The major disadvantage of roads that are quite this small in this car 
is that we have carbon fiber wheels. Now, for the structural integrity of carbon fiber wheels, you don't really want to risk damaging them. Fortunately, we have some passing places, so I can pull just over to the side here, although even that doesn't look hugely smooth, and I don't want to damage a wheel, so onwards. Ooh, makes me a little bit nervous, I'm not gonna lie with these kind of things. In fact, on many cars that you can now order carbon fiber wheels, obviously there are weight savings. You can get them on the Ford GT, the Ferrari 488 Pista, the Shelby GT500 with the track package, but in terms of usability and making sure they don't get damaged, you're certainly a little bit on edge. And this is, well, not ideal in this kind of car, although it is about to open up, and I know where we are, so I know it's about to be possible to put the foot down proper 70 mile per hour dual carriageway. It's actually genuinely sunny here, which is quite nice. The brakes are obviously rather squeaky. Do you use them often? So you get a bit of the torque steer. Let's hope it's going to be possible to uh, accelerate out here. There's technically two lanes here, but let's go all the way around. So, yes, that is what this car is about. And you feel really connected to it when you do put your foot down and accelerate quite hard in it. And you feel everything back through, which is what you want in a track focused hot hatch. And these cars don't necessarily make sense to everyone. Maybe you can put another 50 horsepower in it. But being front driven, that's where you just have a whole load of torque steer going on. And that's not what you want because it would take away and detract a little bit from the driving experience. So I think it's probably about right with this power, maybe a, a touch more. But yeah, the front end, you just dart it in and it sticks. This is great. The way this drives is really good. Back on the power again, hopefully in a second. Yeah, there we go. There is a small wait for the power delivery. It's not there instantly. You do have to kind of hold on just for a moment before it arrives in abundance. Obviously, if we do press and hold and put it back into race mode, that's where ESC, I guess, goes into a sportier setting as opposed to completely off. <laughs> Sounds out of it. Maybe I can make it bang in the tunnel, that would be good. <laughs> Just a little bit. We go all the way back round. But honestly, this is where, when you're leaning on the car, you have a lot of confidence in it. I wish I was on the Nürburgring right now after doing so many laps recently and becoming quite familiar with the place. I would love to be pushing this out there. It's very, very connected. Awesome. Well, I'm gonna head back to base. This has been quite an enjoyable drive. It's expensive though. Just thinking about this, it's really expensive. For the full package, yes, you can get a Trophy R for 51 and a half, plus some options. Hmm, interesting. It's a cool car. It's quite a lot different, as I said at the beginning, from my first car, my little Renault Clio, which obviously is no longer as it was, but either way, still has a very dear spot in my heart. So maybe one day I need another Renault hatch back in the garage as a bit of a tribute. Parked back up with the car burbling away and we will hear some revs in a moment, but have a look at that view behind me. There's not exactly a whole lot going on back there. Very stripped out, the space for the wheels and tires, the netting just behind, the red beam running across, and not much else. Those mounting points that you can see are for strapping down the tires or for the harnesses rigidly mounted to the chassis, all very much for purpose. Then up front, obviously the seats, get it out with the red stitch, the Renault Sport logo up top. And I talked a bit about the door inserts. You've got a lot of red illumination, all the red touches all around. This faux carbon style finish uh, on the inserts and the trim inlays up top as well. But generally, not the most going on inside. Obviously, this is about purpose. It has this smaller display, the seven inch display, as opposed to the 8.7 that you might normally have to save 250 grams. That's the kind of attention to detail. Inside here, this is where you have your different driving modes uh, that I touched on and you can set them up and it all works as I guess you'd expect it. So it's not the highest quality or the most responsive system in the world, but it does the job just fine. Your RS drive, We've still got air conditioning, so still keeps it pleasant. I mean, it's 28 degrees right now. Might not be the sunniest day in the world, but it's certainly muggy outside uh, and a bit humid. We've got some USB ports, AUX port, uh, your usual cigarette 12 volt socket. The manual shifter works very nicely. Reverse is upwards to the left up there, and you do get a reversing camera to make sure you don't damage that carbon fiber diffuser. So that is still included on the car. Very nice feel, short throw on this. Handbrake just behind, nice to have. 
traditional uh, handbrake as opposed to an electronic one. A few other bits and pieces, still a storage cubby uh, for the armrest, so a little bit of practicality going on in there. But let's just open the door for a moment and have a quick listen to this. So I'm gonna pop it into, uh, let's go into sport mode, where it makes the most crackles, and have a little listen. if you were driving that would let you know it is time to shift so I'll just quickly show you if pressing and holding this what the race mode looks like on the dashboard obviously the essential information exactly what you want to see when you are out and about on a track so for the moment we will pop that back obviously it would default if you just turn the car off we're back into neutral get to touch quieter we will turn the car off and go and have a look at a few other things I do quite like the RS badge here by the way including the engine bay so to open that it's actually around on the other side of the car this does look cool i do like the carbon wheels you know they do look nice you're just very conscious that these well three thousand pounds a corner in effect as the optional upgrade wheels something you need to be very very conscious about around the back we didn't look at this in too much detail earlier you've got the openings behind the wheel wells obviously the carbon diffuser and those exhaust tips responsible for making that lovely sound out of this to come round though, open up the bonnet. Hopefully I'm gonna be able to get this right. Give a pull of the lever and the bonnet itself opens. I believe over on this side. Yep, no, oh, that's the car detecting I'm walking away. There's our power plant, not too much to see. Obviously the 300 horsepower, 400 Newton meters being created out of this 1.8 liter turbo four cylinder engine. Actually, normally you'd expect there to be a pretty looking cover over the top but obviously to save some weight that is taken away and then on the underside of here you can see the exposed carbon fiber for the uh, unpainted finish here which looks really really nice I'm just taking in where the airflow goes and how the knacker duct which is obviously behind the silver section there would come in to give the airflow and the additional vents that you have around the sides all managed to optimize the performance out of this wonderful little thing that's the day I have very much enjoyed driving. That's been a lot of fun actually, real eye-opener. I'm glad I got to get the opportunity to get behind the wheel to discover what this special thing is like. It's not every day that a company says that they will actually make something like this. Renault have this history, you know, the R26R, previous generations, some crazy things that they've made over time, the different trophy versions of Clio's and Megans and so forth. But this, in the modern era, is quite a rare thing to make a car that is so impractical, but so awesome and fun to experience. So I've enjoyed it today a lot. Is it worth 72,000 pounds? Well, that's quite a hard one to decide. Obviously only one person has one. So I'm sure to them as a unique car, it's something pretty special to have in the collection. The Trophy R at 51 and a half, that's probably quite a lot of hatchback. And if you intend to do some serious track work with it and one car garage style thing, can't really do much better for today though big thanks to Renault UK for the opportunity to take this out thank you as always to you guys for your support I appreciate it an awful lot but that's it for this time and I'll see you again very soon cheers <laughs>